I'm going to uh, do a video on um, growing all year round. There's loads of videos um, on the internet about uh, growing all year round, whether it's hydroponics or not. Um, and a lot of, uh, there's not really much data out there. I mean, uh, you can, I've often seen videos where people go in, into their greenhouse in, in winter with all the snow on the ground and they can go around eating peas and things like that. This is grown in my greenhouse. It's well, it's a nice image, but it's not really um, factual. I like to uh, before I go into something like that, um, I'd want to gather a few facts together. So what I thought I'd do is I'd pop a, a video up um, showing some of the technical challenges around growing all year round. Uh, a, a lot of people make out it's easy, but it's not. Um, so this video will show you everything you need to know about either. Um, extending the season, which I prefer, or growing year-round. Uh, this is Julio. He's my uh, pepper plant I grew last year. Uh, as you can see, he, he's not really looking that, that, that healthy, is he? Um, last year I grew, I grew this from seed and it grew all year quite nicely, but it was outside um, and it never fruited. So I thought I'd bring it in at winter time uh, grow it all over winter and then it would fruit early part of the year. Great idea, eh? So what I did was I brought it in about uh, October, November, just before the frosts. Um, it was mid-October really. Um, and I've kept it in here, in the warm. So it's never been below 10 degrees, but it's not exactly hot. Um, so certainly no frost in here. And I've had it under a UV light. Uh, give it a bit of extra light. Now in the time that I've uh, had it in in here it's grown you can see these new leaves here see that new leaf so it's now uh, January the well it's end of January now <coughs> I think it's the 29th of January uh, so October November December January it's nearly three months so that that represents three months growth uh, inside so you can see it's not maybe as easy and uh, as simple as people make out to actually get some sort of real growth pop him down uh, so what I've done is I've uh, thrown together some graphs and some data so you can you can see what's required to grow in in the winter and then you can decide maybe if it's something for you or not most people know what plants are like to grow um, but here's a little diagram anyway uh, from our uh, little seedling on the left, we, uh, we, it needs water. That's uh, pretty straightforward. Everybody's got usually plenty of water. It's not usually an issue. Uh, water and can, no problem. Uh, food, similar. Um, it, plants won't grow without food. Uh, you, need a, you need a good balanced food supply, uh, but with uh, fertiliser or organic uh, fertiliser, if, if you're going down that road, not a problem. Now heat, we want to heat next, and uh, that's a bit more... Of an issue because um, although people go around um, in their greenhouses and it can be 20 degrees in your greenhouse on a winter's day uh, if it's sunny, uh, you've got to take an average of, of uh, the temperature throughout the 24 hour period and it's pretty easy for a greenhouse to drop below zero on a clear night. Um, and obviously, if you've got a plant that needs a reasonably warm environment, it'll just kill it if you if you um, let the temperature go below zero at any point in the night. So you uh, you're starting to look at um, what's possible. Uh, some plants don't like as much heat as others, so maybe it would be a good idea if you um, grew plants that were less heat dependent in the winter. Uh, the next one is the most interesting. And it's light. Most people think, well, bung it up to the window, and it'll, everything will be fine. Uh, but in my next slide, check this out. Right, this is a solar panel. Uh, obviously a solar panel, little 1.5 kilowatt hour solar system here. Uh, the more sunshine, the more electric you make. So what I've got here is a graph of the electric produced over a year um, from this um, solar system. Uh, now you can, if you look at the peak, which is the the uh, top, it's forty eight kilowatt hours per week. Uh, that's late June. Uh, but if you look at the bottom, uh, which is what we're interested in, growing in winter, 
Uh, late December, uh, there's one kilowatt hour produced per week. So even if you took an average of the temperatures and uh, of the solar activity in the summer, which is about 30, maybe even 25, um, the one kilowatt hour per week is 25 or 30 times less than what you get in the summer. So um, you're starving your plants of light, and plants need light to um, photosynthesize and to grow fruit. Uh, it's part of it's essential to to growth. So what you're trying to do is um, grow um, in a very light depraved environment. Don't behave. Behave. No, no, Lula. Stop it. Now. The dogs are going mad for a walk. Uh, yeah, what about um, passive solar heating? Uh, basically, you take a big old. Um, oh, I've got a dog here wanting to walk. Uh, you take a big old tub of water, you stick it in your greenhouse, uh, and then you the sunshine warms it up during the day, and that heat is put up, put out at night time and keeps your green nice and nice and nice and warm. Uh, to work out what the potential of that system is, you'd have to work out uh, the raising temperature uh, in your tub of water and the weight of water um, to work out how much possible energy you can put out at night and you would also need to know the um, efficiency of the insulation in your greenhouse um, and also the light transmission so you, you know, you're not going to need a lot of information to find out if that system actually is going to work um, Myself, my opinion is there's not going to be enough solar energy hit the water to warm it up enough in temperature to keep the uh, building warm. Uh, top of the top of my head figures, um, if you had a 500 gallon tank, um, you, the, you, what are you going to raise that in a day? One degree, maybe two degrees uh, from the temp from standard temperature. Uh, it, you, there's no no way the sunshine is going to lift that 10 or 20 degrees. You'd need a, uh, a boiler to do that. So you're looking at maybe one or two degrees increase in temperature. That's optimistic. And then you're looking at what that's going to put back into the into the um, greenhouse. Um, you need a difference in temperature. So let's say the, the water temperature was 10 degrees. It's only going to start feeding. Uh, heat energy into the greenhouse when it drops below 10 degrees so if it drops to 5 degrees there's a 5 degree temperature differential and it'll start to put out some heat how much heat can it put out is dependent on, on um, surface area and, and things like that I honestly don't think it's going to be it's, it's a system that can work I'll do some figures and I'll do, and I'll work out on a couple of things and I'll get back to you um, about the old um, passive malarkey <coughs> So my conclusion would be, uh, don't attempt growing year-round. It's um, far too costly and inefficient to, to actually provide food. A far better way of going on would be to have uh, to extend your growing season and harvest in winter um, and dry foods from the summer, things like that, you know. Um, make your food last. It's far more cost-effective than trying to grow in a, in a in an environment that's really hostile to growth. So my opinion would be, don't um, go for year-round growing. Go for the uh, use your greenhouse to extend the season, start things earlier, finish things later, increase the temperature in summer so you can grow more exotic plants. Uh, that's the the most efficient use you can you can make of, of a greenhouse. Okay, let's have a look at the num the the figures for um, the passive solar. It takes 11.6 kilowatt hours of energy to heat up a square meter of water. That's a tons worth by 10 degrees. The available sunshine in a in a day in winter is typically about 0 0.1 kilowatt hours. Uh, I believe that's a hundred, almost a hundred times less. Um, so the the biggest rise in temperature you could expect the water in this passive system would be 0 0.1 degrees C. So just 0 0.1 degrees, which is, um, well, it's next to nothing. So I hope that helps you out and, and gives you something to think about.